Hey guys, it's Kobe McCool and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this. I always wonder what it would feel like to fly. Yeah. I wonder if I'll ever find that. That's amazing how much it plays in my mind. chill hop vibes. I made this beat for a chill hop beat competition, thanks to Crispy Beats for the nomination, but I only had about a day or so to do it before the entries closed, so this didn't take too long, and all I'm going to do is break down the basic elements and the decisions I made to try and get everything to come together the way that it did. Thanks to all the new subscribers and for everyone for checking out the video, let's just jump into it. So I have each of the elements organized on the playlist and also in the mixer and I will just break each of them down roughly. I actually started out with the piano and it's very simple. It just moves back and forth between an A major chord and an E major chord, but there are just subtle variations all the way throughout it so that it doesn't seem bland and obvious and that's something that can be very powerful is doing a lot with very simple chord progressions but by adding lots of little inflections and other extensions to the chord like sevenths ninths and elevenths and so on you just make it sound much more colorful and much more interesting without having to create loads of crazy jazz chord progressions and so on so i've printed the piano out but i'll show you the midi just to give you an idea This chord, for example, here is just an E chord. That would be the normal E chord, but then I've just added in extra notes. And then up on top, just to try and make it sound more luscious. And then also arpeggiated it slightly, just to give it that luscious lick. And as usual, this is the Lab Soft Piano, which is a free piano from Spitfire Audio. It's down in the description. Then I just added loads of different effects to the piano. Firstly, with a gross beat that I turned on and off so that at the end of certain phrases, it would slide down. Then the other effects that I've added, which actually made it really interesting and good fun to play along with, I've separated them out. So I've got the main piano sound on its own, where if I take the effects off, there's the piano dry with no effect on it. Then I add the effect back on. And it's actually really good fun just to play the piano with the effects on. There's just this massive luscious reverb on it and then also some really cool funky delay. So I've separated them out here. I have the main piano sound coming in and then I've sent that piano sound to a reverb channel and a delay channel and then processed those. I've sent them along to my piano bus and my piano effects bus over here. And that way I can process them all separately as well. And I'll make future videos going into more depth about all of the different piano techniques for lo-fi and chill hop style beats because it's quite a chunky topic. The reverb, I have a Valhalla Supermassive, which is a great free plugin. It's really great for creative style reverbs. And then I also have just an isotope vinyl just to make things slightly more colored and mellow. So I can play the reverb on its own. It's just what the sound of the reverb on its own sounds like. Here's the delay. And what I've done to the delay is just a normal fruity delay bank, but I've increased the grain division um, and the grain shape so that it has this kind of grittiness to it. And then obviously ping ponged it so that it goes back and forth from side to side. And it creates this sort of stutter feeling, which I just thought was really cool. But because I don't have it on the main piano channel, it doesn't completely consume everything. It's just a subtle thing that tickles your ears around in the background, so it's really nice. Then all I've done is controlled those effects so I can turn them on and off when I want them to be there and turn the volume up and down with an automation clip. And that was the piano. I then did more or less the same thing with the guitar. I just added a couple of other EQs because the raw and dry guitar signal is not very nice because I just put it into my direct input here. 
actually this sounds pretty terrible there were some pretty horrendous noises over the top and I was kind of just going quickly so I didn't want to go back and re-record things and I knew that I'd be throwing lots of effects onto it so I knew that I could get rid of most of those sounds in in post it's pretty disgusting on the way in but then I just I knew that there was rich quality in there I just had to weed out all the other stuff I didn't like So as you can see here, it's the same thing. I've got a, a reverb send and a delay send, and then I've bust them all together. And that means that I can put my own EQ and then a sidechain on all of those so that when the beat finally comes in, I can duck those and control them all the way that I'd like to. All that I did with the guitar was I played in a little harmonic just as an intro, just to kind of set the tone and give a nice atmosphere. And then just played some little riffs and lines over the top of it and actually decided that I would let the effects create most of the sonic character of the guitar. I didn't want to go crazy playing loads of different things, and it was the same with the piano. I didn't want to overcomplicate it with far too many notes. I thought I'll just let the effects fill the space by using the delay and reverb, and it creates this really luscious, soft atmosphere behind everything together. And then just to gel those atmospheres in even more and just make everything feel like it's all coming from this luscious lo-fi heaven, I just added in the classic vinyl sound underneath. Without it, it just doesn't have quite the same character. And then I also added in this sort of rainfall or waterfall ambience in order to process it and just make the sonic profile slightly more interesting. I just added a chorus onto it. When I take that off, it just isn't quite as interesting. And then I also added an EQ because originally the sound itself was a bit too all consuming. So I just wanted to try and limit it a little bit. Then the next element that I added in even further, just to increase the lusciousness of the atmosphere of the whole thing was this pad. This was a pad from Omnisphere and I just put in the chords that I wanted. I loved how this sounded on its own. It's such a delicious sound. What I did to make that more interesting was just have it panning slightly from side to side just so that it would maintain interest within your ears and wouldn't just go unnoticed. But nothing too crazily complicated there. Again, I just sidechained the drums to that sound so that it would duck and it wouldn't just completely take over everything. Then, just under a little pretty or delicate element, I just had this little guitarette sound. I just added similar effects to it as the piano and the guitar, just to make it feel like it's coming from the same place. I also took that melody the da da dum and made the piano do more or less the same thing. Just so that it wasn't too confusing, it just makes everything unify together quite nicely. It seems like, oh, this whole track is one thing moving along together. Now, one of the main requirements of the beat challenge that I did was to use quite a few of their drum samples, or predominantly their drum samples, and I didn't actually realize that that was a rule until I'd more or less made the beat. So I already had my own drum samples, but then I took one of their loops, replaced the kick and snare that they had with the kick and snare that I had. So the original loop sounds like this. which was great and I actually really enjoyed how that sounded because initially the drums that I had, they didn't have that double tempo, they were much slower, they were half the tempo. Which sounded really nice, it was very chill and smooth. But then adding in that double tempo really switched everything up and it was lovely what that did to the energy of everything. And the drum beat itself is relatively simple. It's just a cool kick and snare rhythm. And what really brings it to life are the subtle nuances with the hi-hat and the stick rhythms that there are here. And I just tailored all of these to try and fit with the groove as best that I could. Then I even added more of them here. Just some rides and hats just to make everything groove and slide slightly more. But then I also cut up their samples just to make it stutter slightly at the end here. 
just to add a little bit more character and creativeness and my own kind of spin on the whole thing. And then just to gel and vibe with that, I just added an 808. Oh, <laughs> that's ace how heavy that all sounds together. But contrasted so nicely with the lusciousness of the instruments that I just showed you earlier. And then the final element that I added on top just for fun was a little vocal pad. All that was was harmonizing over those two chords, A and E, and then I also added in this funky little beatbox noise, just put that to right and left, just to make it feel even more like it was all coming from the same artist. And they're pretty subtle, I've, I just removed a lot of the low end from them so that it was just this kind of high end tickle in your ear. And I also pitched them down ever so slightly here just to try and make everything seem slightly more slow. And when you pitch things down, that's often what seems to happen. And so I did exactly the same. Because the beatbox doesn't actually have a tone, it didn't matter how much I pitched it up or down, it will be in key more or less anywhere. So I just did it to taste. And then I just added in little phrases talking over the top, talking about dreaming about flying. I always wonder what it would feel like to fly. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if I'll ever find out. And then I decided to call the beat Look Up because I was looking out the window, looking up, thinking what it would feel like to fly. For an hour, just look up. And I pitched those vocals down as well, just so that it felt slightly more mellow overall. I ran the vocals through the normal processing that I would use for vocals, and I also sidechained pretty much everything to the kick and the snare, just so that it would all duck and move together. And then I also just sent most of the main elements, other than the drums, to a parallel mix bus, and just compressed that signal so that I had my main signal, then I also had a heavily compressed signal and I could gel that together just to make everything sound even more rich and luscious. And with lots of those techniques, I can go into more detail in the future, but please do let me know down in the comments if there's any particular things you want to hear more about. I then also threw together a little video edit that I'd love for you guys to watch just now in case you haven't seen it already. So here you go. So that was that. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this beat and the video overall. Hopefully you learned something new and if you have any questions, please do leave them down below in the comments or send me a message on Instagram. Thanks again for checking it out. I look forward to sharing the next one with you, but until then, bye.